everyone and welcome. This is a career talk for the Masters in Language and Communication program. And I'm Alex Johnston, director of that program at Georgetown University Department of Linguistics. And we are so happy to host today, Dr. Anna Marie Trester, who will be launching her second book about linguistics and career. So I'll start with giving a short introduction about Dr. Trester and welcome her, welcoming her back to her home institution. She's one of our own. She got her doctorate in linguistics from Georgetown University. She calls herself an interactional sociolinguist. And in addition to that, she is a story researcher who applies narrative inquiry to career and to self. She spent a good part of her career examining career and self through the lens of storytelling and story listening and through improvisational theater, which she's also an expert in. And in using this lens of narrative inquiry as a guide to doing what we want, to discovering what we want to do in the world of work, she draws upon her various work experiences, such as, just to name a few, the financial services sector, where she worked at Goldman Sachs in New York City, the nonprofit sector uh, at organizations like Frameworks Institute here in Washington, DC. She's worked in broadcast journalism on a documentary called Do You Speak American, hosted by the great uh, McNeil, uh, what's his name, McNeil? His name is Robert, but for some oh. reason he goes by Robin. I've never seen that before. That's right. I think it's a Scottish heritage. And she's also taught and led programs in higher education at institutions like Stanford University, Howard University, American University, and of course, here at Georgetown, where she has a very special place in our hearts. She served as director of the MLC program for over six years, taking over from our founding director, the great Professor Deborah Schifrin. And Anna Marie is also founder and principal of Career Linguist, a clearinghouse for career resources for linguists that she started developing in 2013, and which continues to this day. For the past five years, she's been the convener of the Career Linguist Mighty Network and leader of Career Camp, in which she gathers people interested in career and story around a metaphorical campfire in a warm Zoom room to focus on next steps in career through the lens of story. She is the author of Bringing Linguistics to Work, a story listening, storytelling, and story finding approach to your career, which serves as one of the texts of the MLC Pro Seminar. And her newest book has been published by Bloomberg. It's called Employing Linguistics, Thinking and Talking About Careers for Linguists. It's out right now in ebook format and will soon be available in March in softcover and hardcover editions. We are thrilled to open Anna Marie's book tour with a launch at her home institution. Please give her a warm welcome back to Georgetown. Welcome, Dr. Trester. Oh my goodness, you said you were gonna make me blush. Woo! <laughs> that was amazing. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. you. It's so good to be here. Thank you all. And hello, Nancy, I just... Saw Nancy Frischberg join the community. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you guys are my, uh, the book launch starts now, like right now. Uh, you were here. You can say that you were here to tell the tale. So I have a few slides, uh, but I, I would love questions throughout. You know, if a question comes to you, please chime in and Alex, you'll help me with that. Um, if I can't quite see the chat, oops, not that kind of share. I want to play the slideshow. Are you seeing my slides now? <laughs> okay. So you'll see this term being now here that will make sense uh, in a minute. But uh, I'm going to share three uh, kind of ideas from my new book. And I understand you're reading the old one. Um, and I, yeah, I'm just starting this launch. So I'm learning how to talk about the new book and how it is 
some ways the same in some ways different from um, bringing linguistics to work. One way for sure it's expanded. It's got a bigger global remit and just way more stories. I felt like we needed way more stories. And there were ways that I realized some of the stories were um, geographically and kind of sec sectorially <laughs> focused in ways that I hadn't realized until I started working on another book. Um, but still, this was the quote that I used to begin bringing linguistics to work. I'm still here. Like, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive. Uh, because what the world needs is more people who've come alive. And I mean, that just seems truer and truer and truer as time goes by. Uh, we are living in tough times and uh, <laughs> the world asks a lot of us. So uh, what we need to be asking ourselves is not, you know, who does the you know, world of work want me to be, but instead, what do I have to give? And, um, you know, when you know that it can help you meet the task. It is, it is, it's a big, it's a big deal bringing yourself fully to the challenges of today. Uh, we got multifaceted challenges, so we need multifaceted, uh, I would say linguists, especially, but, um, you know, we need people who are, are able to navigate ambiguity, to, to deal with complexity. We'll talk more about this as we close out today, because hopefully over the course of today, you'll get a chance to kind of remind yourself what makes you tick. Um, so we're going to be pulling three ideas, three themes from uh, employing linguistics. Um, I was delighted that Bloomsbury let me have, I asked for playful uh, cover art and they obliged. Um, and I want this to feel playful. I want this to feel inviting. I want this to feel um, creative, exploratory. Um, this is your space and I'm gonna fiercely protect it for you to, to be radically curious about your career. Um, so three themes um, from the new book and, and yeah, since you're reading the old one, you can probably tell me uh, which ones seem, probably they're all extensions of the same, same ideas, but I felt very strongly that we needed to normalize uncertainty um, somehow. And I, I, I assert that it, partly to do with the stories that we tell about career you tend to get these stories from people who are 20 years into a career right and they tell this story and there's this ever thus quality you know like it almost seems like they always knew where they were going and they always uh you know had clarity there was never any <laughs> confusion um not only do I think uncertainty is normal, I want to celebrate it and I want to foment it because if you're going to do something new, of course there's going to be uncertainty and, and, and confusion and moments of disorientation because you're doing something that no one has done before. Um, and I think that's more and more true of the world of work nowadays. We're, we're encountering challenges that never existed before and we have tools that never existed before. So um, uncertainty should be expected and celebrated, I would maintain. Um, with this book, um, I introduced the acronym Brighton, and I understand you're gonna be reading this chapter soon. And I, I think you guys will enjoy it because it was, it's based around uh, 10 students who did the pro seminar, and then it's 10 years later. <laughs> so, Hopefully you'll see yourselves and I would love to hear from you as you, as you read that. Um, but the central organizing metaphor of this book, and that is different. Um, the central organizing metaphor of bringing linguistics to work is a journey. Um, in this case, I have come to, um, I've come to this metaphor of like looking at the night sky, looking at the constellations in the night sky, 
and thinking about how, um, when you have a full range of stars that you are able to organize into patterns such that you have the ability to see your own organizing constellations, that this is a metaphor that makes sense of all the various activities of exploration, self-exploration and uh, uh, networking, all the activities that you do over the course of a pro seminar, right? Like these may seem to be kind of like, I'm doing this networking and then I'm doing this self-reflection and then I'm doing this thing and I'm doing a research project and I'm making connections, I have this idea, but like they really all do come together. Um, and I, I really, um, I'm enjoying talking about this constellations metaphor as a way to, and I hope that it helps you all kind of organize um, all these activities as well. But also stories are doing work um, throughout this book. And I'm kind of pushing stories to do <laughs> a little bit more work. And like, I'm hoping that they do the work, you know, as author, I don't necessarily always point out that the stories are doing this work, but you all are narrative folk. Um, I hope that uh, you get to experience some of this narrative work. So first of all, uh, when it comes to normalizing uncertainty, I, I was adamant that I have a number of stories in the book. I begin and end the book with people. Um, as I say, the stories are in the midst of their unfolding. <laughs> I talk to people as they are in, like, and you have to know, like, as an author, I would ask people, will you share their story? And I heard a lot of no's, but I didn't take no for an answer because I believe so strongly that we have to hear these stories while they are, while they are emerging, while they are new. And in chapter one, I spent a lot of time with one story um, and I've, I've done some workshops with her story and people hear uncertainty <laughs> in her story, in her, you know, discursive presentation of self. And I mean, I think that's because there was uncertainty and there was, when I talked to her, she was launching her business. She didn't know how it was going to go. Um, but uh, I really wanted to be there with, with her in that moment. Um, so that's one of the ways that I, I, I use narrative as a tool to normalize uncertainty is to use, like I zoomed in on these most reportable events where um, something was just happening now. Like I interviewed someone who's uh, retired and I wanted to talk to her about what she's doing now. Not, you know, the traditional structure where you hear like, tell us about when you left academia. I'm, I'm a firm believer that we need to stop eliciting stories always that way. Um, that doesn't need to be centered in all of our storytelling, in our career storytelling. Um, so I, try, I made a deliberate effort to try to focus on what's happening now in, in the stories that I share in, um, in this new book. Um, with Brighton, I tried to share a, a range of stories I think it's it's a nice set like to have these 10 students 10 years after they graduated. Um, it's a nice uh, tight set, but they also showed a lot of um, difference in their interests and um, and I thought it was fun to kind of tell the story over the course of 10 years because I've known them for 10 years. So I have this perspective that maybe not everybody you know, when you're first starting out, you might not have that perspective. And I, there's a way that I think that perspective can help you, again, normalize uncertainty, right? <laughs> that, um, when you hear about the twists and turns, but, you know, you see how it works out for these 10, maybe you take away an understanding that, you know, even though you're maybe not 100% sure where you're headed, um, that that's, that that's the work and that that's okay. And finally, so today we'll spend some time um, playing with this uh, nested set of metaphors. Um, the idea that, that you should be paying attention to sparks, that we can use sparks to build out stories um, using um, this STAR framework. Um, this is not my framework, this STAR 
storytelling is it's, it's out there it exists in the world um but it's kind of convenient for me that it fits within my metaphor uh, or the metaphor that i'm playing with and that um the activity that we're going to do in, in groups today is going to be helping one another find patterns in stories so uh we'll start with this idea of now here <laughs> this is a story um that I share in the book, I, I was able to go to Finland in the before times. This was just before um, everything came to a crashing halt uh, when it comes to, well, my travel anyway. Um, late 2019, I went to Finland and I was giving a workshop uh, with students about career, um, you know, exploration. And again, they had specially requested that I talk about imposter syndrome. And I was so shocked, but I shouldn't have been, you know, <laughs> imposter syndrome is pervasive because part of the reason is because we are in uncharted times and uncharted territory. And there are so many ways that our careers kind of as linguists exist outside some sort of storied norm of what is supposed to be the career path. Anyways, I'm on the plane to Finland and I open up my <laughs> in-flight magazine to this campaign about now here. So this is the art from um, the campaign, uh, Fin Air's um, now here campaign. The idea is that um, if you come to the middle of nowhere, you can really find yourself now and here. And I love that play on words. I love that um, just idea of just really embracing where you are. And if you're feeling like you're in the middle of nowhere, like that's exactly where you are. And that's exactly where, um, that's exactly where you're starting from. That's exactly where to be. Um, so I sent, I, I, I share a little bit of this, um, this idea and um, some activities for, for kind of embracing the here and now. Um, and I give um, this acronym Brighton then on the heels of that um, ambiguity to say, okay, so um, you might be navigating new terrain, but like, it's not like there aren't people out there doing um, really important and interesting and, and, and great things with their skills and training in linguistics. So I offer this acronym to you as an answer. You know, if you've got somebody in your face saying, what are you going to do with your degree in linguistics? <laughs> Here's an easy answer. Um, Brighton is, a, is an easy response to all the things that a linguist can do. Um, it is deliberately positive. It is deliberately um, on purpose, it is optimistic and right, illuminating. Um, that's not an accident. That's because um, we need to be reminding one another too that this is, you know, while challenging. And yeah, you know, it is formidable to, to try to reinvent or, or invent career pathways in many cases. Um, we have a community of, of fellow explorers um, and we have resources. You know, we have um, in, in, in bringing linguistics to work, I talk about like the traveling companions that you have uh, within that metaphor. Um, but in the metaphor of stars, right? Um, I, I really want to pull from the domain of energy that uh, going back to how we started today, you know, thinking about what gives you energy, what makes you come alive, what gives you strength. So uh, in that chapter, that's chapter two, I share stories of people doing, um, you know, and these, these categories are not mutually exclusive, <laughs> business, research, ingenuity, government, healthcare, communications, technology, education, and nonprofits. These buckets are, you know, they're intertwined already, 
Um, and in, in many cases, the stories that I tell, somebody is doing kind of three at once, um, depending on, and, and many people on this call could <laughs> speak to their experience uh, working in government, but also, you know, uh, doing work that involves um, education or research or, you know, intersects with the business world. Um, our jobs are multifaceted. But I guess I really wanted this acronym as a place to begin um, so that you have somewhere to start um, kind of doing the work of locating yourself. This helps you, but it also helps other people to, to help orient to you and what you have to bring to the world of work. And so then the third idea is this, this idea of stars in the night sky. And you'll notice, you know, here we have hundreds, if not thousands of points. Um, I, I want this to be a reminder to all of you, like as you are taking the pro seminar and you're being asked to do informational interviews and do research into organizations and think about your own research projects, you're gonna be kind of starting to uncover hundreds of, um, ideas, you know, illuminating ideas, sparks, if you will. Um, the task is to hang on to those and start thinking about how they, how they mean for you. And let's move into an activity to kind of start thinking about uh, what that could look like. So I have, I created a little jam board. Um, Helen, I think has the link if you'll share with us. Okay. So the idea is um, as you're hearing me talk or as you're starting to do the pro sem and you're starting to think about who you're informationally interviewing, you know, what sparks are starting to suggest themselves to you? What are some of your bright spots? Um, this is a picture of, of me doing this activity. Um, in the book, I, I share this, this image, but um, what are some of yours? You know, I think it could be stuff that you, you know, as you, as you read um, the 40 or so stories that are contained in, in, in employing linguistics, once you have the book, um, those are designed to sort of spark curiosity, interest, engagement. But then I hope that these stories invite you to think about, you know, projects and, and tasks that you tend to be drawn to, um, what other people tell you about what makes you come alive, what, um, where they see you sparking. Um, yeah, and I should pop over to the Jamboard. Maybe I'll stop sharing for a minute so that we can look over at that. The thing about the Jamboard, right, is that you have um, little post-it notes. So I would love it if, if people start seeing patterns and maybe even start labeling those patterns. You know, you could do that with um, another little post-it note saying like, hey, over here, I see a lot of skills. I know, I think you're at the part of the semester where you're just starting to think about skills that you have. And, and I think, all of you have been being trained in a similar, with similar paradigms and similar, you know, analytical frameworks, but probably they spark for you differently. So we're really after here, you know, how does it spark with you? You know, you all might have learned something about narrative analysis, but I'm imagining every one of you would take narrative analysis and use it to a different, a different purpose. Oh, I love doing interviews makes me feel alive. I want to know more about that. <laughs> what about doing interviews? Can you be even more specific? What is it about the interview process? Is it the crafting the questions? Is it the, um, you know, putting together the insights, following an argument, following an idea, chasing down somebody's life story. 
So I'll give you all, yeah, a few minutes to pop ideas here. Yeah, those of you uh, who know me will not be surprised to hear that I'm I'm finding <laughs> that I want to ask why to all of these. <laughs> why? You know, why does learning from and interacting with native speakers of other languages, why does that give you energy? And I'm not just asking why to be, you know, annoying. Um, I would guess that there's different answers for, for any of you. You know, we all became linguists, but we all became linguists likely for different reasons and want to do different things with them. Oh yeah, observing people doing things without being aware. All right, we're starting to have lots of good raw material here, <laughs> material for uh, uh, star stardust. So Alex, uh, could we keep keep popping things in? Um, what we're gonna do when we get into um, we're going to get into partners now for 10 minutes. And I want you to, let me go back to my slides. So if you're with a partner, each of you figure, each of you has, um, five minutes as speaker. I want you to share three sparks. And it could be, you know, something that you put in that jam board or something that you're seeing in that jam board that's reminding you about something that you spark to. But share three things. Um, your partner's job is to help you illuminate some patterns among those three. And now patterns can be a lot of things. When I talk about patterns, I'm talking about you know, as linguists, when you hear somebody present their three things, do you notice anything about how they're ordered? How are they sequenced? Does one seem to be um, in a larger category than the others? Are there subsets? Um, as you hear this person talk about their three interests, are those three interests very similar to you, to yours? Or are they very different? Um, if you know this person, IRL, you know, um, as they share these three patterns, do, do, as they share these three sparks, do those seem to, to, do they seem to jibe for you? Like, are those the three things that you would say are these persons, um, North Stars, um, or maybe uh, something different that you want to offer to them? Or um, maybe you've seen these one or many of these, you know, bright spots. Maybe you've seen them show up in um, some different contexts. So the the true star in this breakout room is the is the listener, the story listener. But um, have fun. Look for patterns, and and when you come back, we want to hear. Um, did your partner help you discover something different about how you make meaning, how you make connections, how you find patterns? Does that make sense? It's a little bit exploratory. It's a little bit fun. There's no way to do this wrong. There's no way to do this right either. You're, uh, you're playing with, with meaning making. Okay, if you're ready, Anna Marie, I can open all the rooms and invite people to to Perfect. move and the timer will be set for 10 minutes. So when you see that 60 second countdown, feel free to take that and, or come back to the main room. Well, my slide says, how did that go? <laughs> so I can put a slide up, how did it go? I'd love to know if anyone helped their partner or their partner help them recognize a pattern or a, a theme. Anyone willing to share? And then we can kind of open this up into more discussion. Alex and I were chatting uh, that we might do some story prompting and discussion.
Mel. Yeah, and Dimitri, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, um, I'd like to actually share something that Hannah shared with our group saying like, um, cause like, I think this just like, I, I shared from like my perspective that like, I think some, a place that I have found catharsis is like being comfortable I re-identifying with other things that isn't a linguist because I feel like I've like kind of like in the past when I've like called myself a linguist that's made me anxious about what I want to do and so it's like I've almost had to dissociate from the term or like the title to like see myself in different spaces um and then like something that Hannah said that I just thought was like great and I think really kind of like ties into like all of the sparks that like we see on the like the the board is like yes I may have a degree in linguistics but I can do a lot of other things and like there's just a kind of like a sense of empowerment like being something more than just a linguist even though like linguistics are like what get our mental cogs going yeah I love in this metaphor right I can see maybe like like linguistics is a set, it's a constellation, right? And it's it's got some like really interesting, important <laughs> bearing markers for you. But then there's this whole other um, galaxy or, you know, but it's, you get to choose where that sits in your, um, in your night sky, in your guiding. Who else wants to share? Vima has her hand up. Oh, yes. I can go um, very quickly. Something I think Helen helped me identify that was really kind of, it was a spark for me. So I was talking to her about how my data collection, mainly um, observation, like fieldwork observations, interviews, was really um, rewarding for me, even though it was very tense. Like I had to negotiate like very difficult relationships, very, um, you know, very, I had very tense moments, but it was still very rewarding. And Helen pointed out that, you know what? I think that's a good point. Like identifying our sparks at our most difficult moments may be rewarding because that's what, we're gonna be, that's basically, those, those are sustainable sparks. Love it. I don't know, Helen, maybe you can explain more, but I love what you did to me. Yeah, and just very shortly, I think uh, Rima's example was uh, very illuminating for me in terms of understanding sparks in adversity. Like certain things, you know, we might, like I was thinking about how much I love working in teams, but as of now, I've always chosen my teammates. So when, when I'm having a career in the future, when I get placed in a team that I don't get to choose, will I still enjoy teamwork or um, is it going to be very dependent on the circumstances? So we had a bit of a discussion about that. I love it. And you know, you, you will be asked if you're, um, I'm hearing from, I'm still hearing from a lot of folks that this is a very popular interview question. Tell us about a time when you, had a challenge or a problem or a, a conflict. Um, and in, employers really want it. They do really want to hear about a conflict. They don't want you to blow smoke and say, oh, you know, I'm just so hardworking. You know, it's too, <laughs> I'm too good. They really want to hear about a, because people are challenging, right? Like you're going to be, you're going to be tried and tested. And they want to know that, uh, you know, you have the metal. So fantastic. It's so good to have an example of, of adversity and still hanging on. Like, I, I think these are, I like with the metaphor, you get the idea of the North Star, you know, that there are certain things that are going to just be your, no matter what, I know that this is, this is true for me. And that can help you in times of challenge. and struggle <laughs> yeah nancy's my problem is i get along with everyone that's my problem yeah no <laughs> nicole i saw you had your hand up earlier love to hear from you yeah so i mean mine was kind of like an addendum to what um Dimitri was saying how, um, and I think you and I talked about this a little, um, where 
essentially I, my answer would always be if somebody asked me like, oh, like, what are you going to do with linguistics? Like, if you're not going to do academia, what are, what are your plans? And my answer was always like everything, but nothing. <laughs> like, cause I like the way that I thought about it was like, maybe there isn't like a direct career that I can like think of that I can like matriculate into um, as like, I don't know, like investment banking, like you, you do something with that and then you just go into investment banking. Whereas like linguistics, like you can truly do anything. Um, and so it's like, I'm, I'm very glad this activity happened just because it's like a very good way to like sit down and be like, okay, like I could do everything with linguistics, but like, what about what I do with linguistics, can I employ further? Like identifying these, these points that are like transferable. So that is, that was my little (laughs) addition. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. And I hope like, if you have an informational interview, how fun would it be for you to bring these three? If you, if you had three little sparks and say like, yeah, I could do anything with my training. Here's three things I'm thinking about right now. Here's three things that like, I'm excited about. Boom, boom, boom. Give that to an informational interviewee. Interview, you're the interviewer, they're the interviewee. Yeah. (laughs) And then like, they can just kind of play with you and discover and explore and sense make right along with you. I went to a panel, um, Stephanie, I see your hand up. So we'll go to you next. Um, I don't know if any of you saw this recent, um, over the summer, the American Anthropological Association had a bunch of career uh, webinars. And I loved this one along these same lines of everything and nothing, (laughs) everything but nothing. Um, Somebody was just, she kept coming back to like, I can show you so much more easily how I think as an anthropologist. Like I can show you so much easier than I can tell you. So she was always trying to get, you know, some context where she could be able to show, right? If that's like doing a demonstration project, doing an internship, um, just joining along for a meeting, or even just in that moment, getting that person to kind of disclose a little bit of the challenges that they're working on. If you can get somebody to share those with you and just like demonstrate on the spot, well, this is how I would approach that. And this is a skill that I would bring. And like, you can show them how you think and work. All right, did I scare away our hand person? Um, Stephanie, there you are. Because I wasn't quite sure if the sharing was <laughs> over. Sorry, I got um, a little bit carried away. <laughs> okay. You go. Uh, uh, oh, I was just going to kind of connect to the, a bit to the every, everything, but nothing. Because uh, I, was in a, I was in a group with Mario, and he actually, uh, he, kind of, he actually kind of helped me uh, make kind of a broader generalization of like environments that I might be comfortable in which wasn't kind of a way I thought about things that excite me more because I I feel like when I'm telling people about what I might want to do with linguistics I'm always kind of uh, I can always kind of default to bringing up like specific fields just so it sounds more salient but I guess I guess when I do it too much it kind of constrains it a little bit so it was kind of cool to hear like kind of that environmental like generalization because uh actually so our conclusion was actually two out of three of the things that I listed that excited me were were mostly environments where uh people who don't want to be there are already gone (laughs) so it's like it's 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 kind of it was kind of interesting because it sounds a little it sounded a bit like constraining where it's like I clearly enjoy certain environments where people are already invested in but it's also like I I also need diversity within those environments like there needs to be a lot of stuff in them so I don't really know what that means but it was pretty it was an interesting conversation so um yeah I hope like I say, this gives you the um, sort of a mechanism for sharing and getting feedback. Um, 
Alex, I can share the story that we talked about because it's it's sort of similar. I mean, it's sort of what I, in creating this book, I kind of did the same thing to myself <laughs> where, um, huh, yeah, I see in the chat, I, you know, gosh, you know, the imposter syndrome is real. Um, I began the book. So chapter one features Charlotte Lindy, which I don't know if folks know Charlotte Lindy. To me, um, she's the, she's the, yeah. So it's, Charlotte Lindy is a big, to me, she's a big badass. <laughs> and I, I start the book with a story where she was approached by NASA and quite frankly, scared to death um, because um, NASA came to her with a challenge that she had not studied before. And um, she's a meditator now. I, I told you that I told the story of someone who's retired. She's that person. She's a meditator now. She's a meditation teacher. Um, and I can hear the seeds of being an experienced meditator already in her story when she shares that moment because she says that when NASA contacted her, she could see and see through the fear at the same time. She could see that she was scared and she could see through it, see it for what it's what, what it was, which was that, yeah, she didn't know if she could help them, but she knew that she wanted to try and she knew that she was curious and she knew that she had formidable skills, which you all do, formidable skills and training um, to bring to the work. So she felt the fear and did it anyway. And, um, so I wanted her in chapter one. I also really wanted Samantha Beaver. I was talking to Alex during the, when you guys were in your breakout rooms, she and I were talking about Samantha's story. I met her when I was, I was um, visiting different schools to promote um, bringing linguistics to work. I met her at Madison. Um, she was a graduate student and just you know, starting to think maybe I'm going to launch my own business. And I asked her, could I talk to you while you're launching it? And we had a Zoom call every couple months while she was deciding, um, am I creating my own business? Is this, is this what's happening? Like, I mean, and, and you can hear it in her, you know, in, in the, in the back and forth in our conversations, there's moments where she's actively kind of like, okay, I'm going to do this. Like I am going to, she's discursively creating the identity at the same time that the identity itself is emergent. But you know, that's sometimes that's how it goes, especially for people who are going to be doing something entrepreneurial. Um, and I thought it was also important in chapter one, um, I include a story of Anne Charity Hudley because I wanted to include a story of a professor because I think there's, there's not, it's not a, um, I'm trying to disrupt that binary, right? That like you can be a professor or you can do, you know, I think it's an and, right? And, and that is one of the really exciting things we can do with our skills and training. And I think there's really exciting ways that I see Anne working as a linguist at the same time that she's working like a linguist. Um, and I think all of us, I hope you will, move through this world now and forever like linguists, whether or not you have that, we've already been talking about, you know, what relationship you take up and carry and maintain and share to the term linguist. You are being trained to think like linguists and I, I, I want you to carry that as a North Star, as a bearing, um, because it's, it's really key. It's really important and the world needs it. So Alex uh, and Helen, maybe I'll share my slides with you. I'm not looking at my slides right now, but the, the last slide was basically a call to arms, like the world needs us. Uh, and here's some reasons why. Thank you, Anna Maria. I'll make sure that we get those slides distributed to those who registered for this talk. And I want to draw attention to the next stop on Anna Marie's book tour, which is being hosted by the Linguistics Career Launch. And I have a sign up to that event in the chat. That will be a little different in format. Anna Marie will give a short 
a short talk about her book, sharing more stories and more tips and strategies. And um, of course, talking about her, her metaphor, her guiding metaphor of Brighton. And then we'll have a mixer where you can interact on the Gather platform. So if you'd like to try that out, that's going to be on February 18th, and the sign up is in the chat. I've also posted links to Anna Marie's website so you can access all of the resources she has available for career linguists. And I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. And can we all give Anna Marie a, a warm thank you for her talk? Thank you so much, Anna Marie. Please don't be strangers. <laughs> <laughs>